Hello everyone. Here's another episode of Smart Fox TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Ms. Jessica Spallino, CEO, founder, educator, curriculum specialist, PhD, author, musician, mother, mentor to her administration, teachers, staff, and students. She has lit a path in education and shone a light on the importance of being independent and making moves that show integrity. I am blessed to have the opportunity to work for Ms. Bellino as she has shown her deliberate acceptance and movement towards change as a trailblazer who demonstrates sacrifice and dedication to the success of our youth and employees with the unique needs in the 21st century. Today's episode continues our focus on the celebration of women every day and especially recognizing them for the month of March. For Women's Month, please enjoy my interview continuation with Jessica Spallino. And here, what would you suggest for young women today? Young women who are maybe not sure what they want to do. You know, I, I think it's a tricky time. I, I, I think with with the with the, the multiple avenues that young women have today to either express themselves or you know different um, channels to pursue. I also think they have a couple of, of new challenges that maybe we didn't. And, I, I, you know, the first is just social media. I think they are constantly comparing what their life looks like to somebody else's. And, you know, those that they're watching are, are, are packaged in a way to look very um, attractive and spectacular and, um, you know, um, glamorized. And nothing can really measure up to that in the real world. Nothing. Uh -uh. And um, I, I think it puts them at a really in a really tough spot. And yeah. I, I, you know, I think the biggest and most important thing is to learn how to distance from that and uh, and recognize it for what it is. It certainly has its, its value in connecting. You know, they, that's how they all stay connected. Yeah. Um, but being able to differentiate, you know, what's real and, and what isn't, what's realistic and what isn't, what's right. being glamorized and what isn't, and I, I do think it's a it's a pretty significant barrier to um, being real, being authentic. I think yeah. it always has to look a certain way so that it, it translates well to the platform, right. and um, that concerns me. And I, I see my own daughter. I see. Uh, many struggle with that as a kind of a barrier, uh, yeah. more of a barrier than, you know, an enabler. Yeah. Um, I worry about that. And I, and, you know, I, I do also think that back in our day, it's, you went to high school and you graduated and you went to college. College was just a, an assumption. Yeah. On the most part, you weren't going to get a job or you weren't going to be able mm -hmm. to do much if you didn't have your college degree. And I don't, you know, I think in many cases that still rings true, but mm -hmm. I, I think some of that has been broken down. I, I, I think that there are so many more paths these days to yeah, take, and it so doesn't, much. it's not always reliant on a college degree. This is true. And so that, although that's very liberating in some ways, it's also like, well, okay, then what do I do? And, mm -hmm. and I, I feel like having, you know, the courage to continue to explore, getting out and traveling, um, getting out and just exposing um, themselves to as many fields, areas, experiences as they can if they're not sure. Yeah. Um, because there really are infinite, infinite possibilities in, in, our, in our communities and in our, in our world of, that, that they can pursue and really make an impact. It's just a matter of, you know, being their authentic selves yeah. and, and exposing them to what all those possibilities are. So I, I think it's new challenges, but I think what comes with those new challenges these days are so much, is so much opportunity. Yeah, there is definitely. I, 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 I think it's, it's really important to, to note the evolution, right? The evolution of, of, you know, a woman's position. Um, uh, in society and, and in, you know, not only in in our homes, right, and in a family structure, but certainly in the business world and, and in other industries. Mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated by the women who, you know, break through a lot of barriers and 
when you talk to them, you know, I was doing research. I, I, I wrote a book last year and I did research on um, a few influential women. Mm -hmm. um, and Kathy Sullivan is one of them. And she was an astronaut. And then she was the, the first woman to be both an astronaut and to reach the, um, the deepest part of the ocean. So she's done both. She's oh, wow. gone all the way to space and she's, but she was the first woman to do both. Oh, wow. And, you know, as I researched her, um, there's just no fluff or drama there. Like there were so many interviewers who came to her and so many people who quoted her and so much written about her and they would probe the questions around, you know, how does it feel to be a woman to do that? And yeah. how does it, what, what barriers and what, and I was so sh struck by her. She's just very matter of fact. She was like, I, I don't know. I'm just a woman and I'm interested in this. And so I did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like so refreshing. And, and that in of itself is so powerful to me. Just, she didn't really, if there were barriers, she dealt with them and she overcame them and she didn't kind of waste much time on them because she yeah. had other things that were way more important to her to do. Yeah. And I I really respect that. And um, I see that as just a direct model, at least for me and could be for a, a lot of women. Yeah. Um, but I really love that and I love, um, you know, reflecting on that and certainly seeing how there is opportunity there. There absolutely is opportunity there for women. I think it's just a matter of um, understanding your space, navigating through the barriers that, that will be there mm -hmm. and how much time you want to put into um, uh, focusing on the barriers rather than what your, you know, your initial outcome is. And that's kind of what seems to work for me is I know that I, I run into barriers. Right. We, we all do as women every day in, in small ways and bigger ways throughout, throughout our lives and our careers. Um, but I like to just spend less time on the obstacles, just figuring out how to get through those obstacles and more time on, you know, what, what really is important to me and what am I really trying to achieve yeah. here? And that's, that's where really I want good to put my energy and my focus on the most part. What like trait? other than um, the ones we've spoke of, what, what other traits would you say, you know, the women around you and your, you know, and then yourself with your daughter, you possess, like what traits do you also try to pass on? You know, I, I grew up with three brothers and a sister and, um, you know, I, I grew up in a home uh, riddled with mental illness um, an addiction. It wasn't a, uh, a trouble-free mm -hmm. um, environment. And um, it, it's taken a lot of a, a lot of reflection and work to resolve some of that for myself yeah. as a as a as a person and a professional and certainly as a parent. Um, and you know, I think so many of us have those origin moments throughout you know our our childhood experiences and, mm -hmm. and throughout that kind of really mark um, either important develop things that happen to us during developmental years yeah, or that really stand out that kind of maybe demonstrate key, key qualities or elements we have within us. And I, I, there are several throughout mine that I, again, wasn't interested in letting things get in my way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so from however small they were, and, you know, I, rem I can remember being – five and wanting to learn how to roller skate I, I had a um acquired roller skates with my cousin they were hand-me-downs and I was so excited to get them and you know I lived in a household of seven and nobody wow. really had the time to spend with me to to teach me so I was like well that's that's fine I'll be outside I remember the day I'll never forget it and I put them on and we had kind of a bigger backyard somehow I don't know we had a spacious backyard but we did and um I went out in the morning and I did not come back in. I didn't come back in to eat. I didn't come back in to do anything. I had told myself I wasn't going back in until I knew how to roller skate. I love I that. Remember That's amazing. My mom came out and um, <gasps> it was dark and she said, you're going to have to come in now. It's just time. And um, <laughs> I said, well, I, I think I need just a little bit longer. I'm about there. And she let me stay out a little bit longer and I went in that night I was scraped up I was bruised wow. up I was exhausted I was sweaty 
but I was accomplished because I came in and I, I taught myself how to skate. And um, I, there, there are several of those kind of throughout that you just that kind of self-reliance I, w- I was forced to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, it turns out it wasn't a bad thing in a lot of ways. And um, I absolutely see that in my daughter. Um, I, I, I see it in her now. She, she, she has kind of that same, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and fix that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And right. um, that's always been kind of a theme for me. It's, it's, uh, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, that kind <laughs> exactly. Of Exactly. I, that's amazing. So I, I feel like that's been kind of a theme for me throughout my life. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I, um, I, if anything, I have to be sure I stay patient and kind with others. When it's something I need to work on personally. I feel like I, I can totally relate to that, too, as far as that. Like when you're really consistent, when you have your mind made up, that's when you're going to be the, the most successful. Yeah. And when no and and when you realize no one's the, really there to distract your ability to do it. Welcome to Sports Trivia Mondays. Which tennis player won the most Grand Slam tournaments? Margaret Court, Serena Williams, or Steph Graf? Be back with the answer. Hi, this is Sally with SmartFox TV, and do we have some good news for you. Today, as we continue to observe Women's History Month, we'll look at some women who are making waves of difference in their community. As the Guide Dog Foundation turns 75 years old, retired Navy Commander Melissa Harrington is raising her 21st dog for the organization. She has been raising pups to be guide dogs since 2002, when she first got a puppy after her third daughter was born. Harrington felt that loving a dog for a year and giving it away to help others has taught her children to be more giving. Her 21st dog in training is called Swap, or Sunny with a Purpose, which is a nod to the pup's predecessor named Sunny. Harrington describes Swap as a spicy golden who is full of energy and snaps into focus the moment the vest is placed on her. Since being a guide dog requires exposure to many environments, Harrington has brought Swap to many places like the grocery store and historical landmarks. Swap also accompanies Harrington's husband to an organization near the Pentagon and sometimes even meets military dogs there. Harrington loves working for the Guide Dog Foundation, which pairs people who are visually impaired with guide dogs that each take $50,000 to breed, train, and raise. She works hard to get her dogs exposed to many places so that they are more socialized and better able to support their handler. For her, the most rewarding part is getting to meet the people matched with the dogs she trains at graduation ceremonies. As a young Colombian girl in the 1980s, Diana Trujillo dreamed about space. She eventually came to the U.S. to study with only $300. Today, she is a successful aerospace engineer who leads a 45-person team at NASA that moves the robotic arm of the newest Mars rover. How does she do all this? Her story is one of perseverance, meaning she never gave up and worked really hard. Born in 1983, she loved science even though she knew it was a male-dominated field. Luckily, her dad sent her to Miami to live with her aunt, and that was where she worked in various housekeeping jobs throughout college. While others studied or partied, she cleaned bathrooms and studied English and aerospace engineering, never once complaining. In order to get to class, she would sometimes have to take up to six buses. For her, she saw this opportunity to work and study in the U.S. as a huge blessing. When one of her professors mentioned how he knew an astronaut, Trujillo became all the more determined to one day work for NASA. She was later picked as one of two people to go into NASA Academy and became the first Hispanic woman to do so. Her perseverance and ability was recognized by robotics expert Brian Roberts, who had her join his team at the University of Maryland where she graduated with a BA in Aerospace Engineering. That same year, she joined NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center and did many accomplishments, including giving NASA's first Spanish transmission and winning numerous awards in her field. Today, she continues to lead by example to encourage more women like her to take STEM careers and shows that anyone who works hard can reach their dreams, even if it seems out of this world. Thanks again for joining us for some good news. The tennis player with the most Grand Slam wins is Margaret Court. She had a total of 24 Grand Slams. Serena Williams right behind her with 23. Thank you for playing Sports Trivia Mondays. Kim, and thanks for watching Smart Fox TV. Stay foxy!